dressed in blue, painted pink scars, proof enough it's you. Oh, it's you. Your creation claims you're true. All creation's eyes and Shalom, shalom, shalom. Welcome to the Plur Palace. I'm Kili Kina. How's it going? Hi. I moved my camera and I moved my ring light because I started making videos, singing and stuff, and I'm going to do other things, but I figured out how to hook up my phone to the Roadcaster Duo and also my iPad, so I don't have an audio delay with music. So that's a, an exciting discovery. Hello. And I also was messing with my hair earlier, so it looks a little different today because I swooped it over because it was just bothering me. But uh, yeah, I just want to read scripture and sing worship. That's probably all I'll do tonight. I don't, I don't know if I play any video games because we'll see. We'll see what happens. But hello, Neko. How is it going? I do want to start off with a worship song, though. Let's see if this works. Should work. Hmm. Do I want this one or this one? Ugh, it's not connected again. Apparently I have to like reconnect it over and over. Bluetooth. Not connected. I don't know why it disconnected. Oh wait. Mm. No, I didn't turn it off. Maybe because I closed my iPad. Maybe that's why. It's working. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Oh wait, that's not the words. 
Hold on. <laughs> okay. I'll try that again. <laughs> I skipped a verse, I guess. Oh well, whatever. Why does that sound weird? Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, perfect love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, perfect love of God. Hey. Shalom. <laughs> When I was your foe, still you love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so Like, where'd I want to go? <laughs> There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. To me, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, perfect love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night in line. I couldn't earn it, no, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Perfect! 
dang it. <laughs> Perfect love of God. It still bothers me that he, he made the word reckless. Like, God's love is not reckless, it's perfect. God's love is not reckless, it's perfect and meticulous and planned and beautiful, intentional. <laughs> intentional is a good word. Perfect love, unconditional love. <clears throat> Okay. That did not sound the best, but that's okay. <laughs> I feel like singing this, so sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every goodness of God your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your it's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Your it's running after me Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made sing of the goodness of God I'm gonna sing cause all my life you have been faithful 
having one of those moments where I just want to keep singing worship so <laughs> I was only going to sing like two songs initially but I feel like worshiping right now so yeah what is this what does this one sound like oh never mind Ugh. gross this one doesn't sound good either. <laughs> I forgot how horrible those sounded. Cause it's one of those where they just like take the vocals out and it's just like, ugh. Never mind, not that one. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> glory be to God, all oh, glory be to God, all oh, glory, glory be to God. <clears throat> You're the same God today And the same God tomorrow Help me see the victory You already see Let my faith be today What it will be tomorrow When I've seen the victory You already see Oh, oh, oh. Jesus I believe oh, oh, oh we need a miracle you are the miracle maker God of the possible there is no power greater exceeding abundant beyond what we could ask or think we call on your name Jesus By the power of your name And all for your glory The sick are healed The soul is filled The battle has been won On your promise I stand and in faith I believe it Then what I pray in your name It's already done Oh, oh, oh let your will be done oh, 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 we need, we need a miracle You are the miracle maker God In the waiting, you get 
the glory in the healing you get the glory in the breaking you get the glory in the breakthrough you get the glory in the waiting you get the glory in the healing you get the glory in the breaking you get the glory in the breakthrough you get the glory 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 we need a miracle you are the miracle maker god of the possible there is no power greater exceeding abundance Exceeding, abundant, beyond what we could ask or think, we call on your name. We call on your name. Jesus. <laughs> Popping noises. What popping noises? When? I don't hear any popping noises. I don't know what to tell you. Because I don't hear the popping noises. So. If you could make clips of it or something. But it's not clipping. We need. That sounded, that sounded like my throat. That was not popping. <laughs> we need a miracle. You are the miracle maker. God of the possible. There is no power greater. It might be from the Bluetooth, playing the music from Bluetooth. Because I did notice earlier when I recorded a video, when it would like connect to the Bluetooth, it would make a popping sound. And I also had my phone directly connected to the Roadcaster Duo, so I don't know. But I'm not hearing popping, so I don't know what you're hearing. Oh, I forgot about this song. Hmm. All right. I think I want to read scripture now. Because it's 1030 already. And I have to work tomorrow, so... I got scriptures written down here that I want to go through. <laughs> Dang it. I had another notebook, but I think it's in my car. But I wrote down notes on Sunday when I went to church. 
but I guess I'll go through those another day. <laughs> Today is the 29th, so I'm going to start off with Proverbs 29 and Psalms 29. Yes, I'm still missing my diamond nose ring because it cost $200 to get a new one. And I have not wanted to spend that yet. <laughs> a man who hardens his neck after much reproof will suddenly be broken beyond remedy. When the righteous increase, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, people groan. A man who loves wisdom makes his father glad, but he who keeps company with harlots wastes his wealth. The king gives stability to the land by justice, but a man who takes bribes overthrows it. A man who flatters his neighbor is spreading a net for his steps. By transgression, an evil man is ensnared, but the righteous sings and rejoices. I kind of want music on there we go uh no I don't want to play Fortnite right now <laughs> I'm reading the word of God thanks okay <laughs> By transgression, an evil man is ensnared, but the righteous sings and rejoices. The righteous is concerned for the rights of the poor. The wicked does not understand such concern. Scorners set a city aflame, but wise men turn away anger. When a wise man has a controversy with a foolish man, the foolish man either rages or laughs, and there is no rest. Men of bloodshed hate the blameless, but the upright are concerned for his life. A fool always loses his temper, but a wise man holds it back. If a ruler pays attention to falsehood, all his ministers become wicked. The poor man and the oppressor have this in common. Oh, I'm reading a different version. I want to read this version. <laughs> Adonai gives light to the eyes of both. If a king judges the poor with truth, his throne will always be secure. A rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself disgraces his mother. When the wicked thrive, wrongdoing increases, but the righteous will see their downfall. Correct your son and he will give you rest. He will bring delight to your soul. Where there is no divine vision, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who keeps Torah. A servant cannot be corrected by words, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see someone hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than him. If someone pampers his slave from childhood, in the end, he will be ungrateful. An angry man stirs up dissension, and a hot-headed one commits many transgressions. A man's pride will bring him low, but a humble spirit will gain honor. An accomplice of a thief is his own enemy. He hears the oath but says nothing. Fear of man will prove to be a snare, but one who trusts in Adonai will be kept safe. Many seek an audience with a ruler, but from Adonai one receives justice. The righteous detest the unjust, and the wicked detest the upright. That was Proverbs 29. Now I'm going to read Psalm 29. A Psalm of David ascribed to Adonai, O sons of God, ascribe to Adonai glory and strength. Ascribe to Adonai the glory of his name. Bow down to Adonai in the beauty of holiness. The voice of Adonai is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. Adonai is over mighty waters. The voice of Adonai is powerful. The voice of Adonai is full of majesty. The voice of Adonai breaks the cedars. Yes, Adonai shatters cedars of Lebanon. 
He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of Adonai hews out flames of fire. The voice of Adonai shakes the desert. Adonai shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of Adonai makes the deer writhe in birth and strips forests bare, and in his temple all are saying glory. Adonai sits enthroned over the flood. Yes, Adonai sits as king forever. Adonai gives strength to his people. Adonai blesses his people with shalom. <clears throat> And the scripture of the day was Isaiah 6, 7. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your inequity is taken away and your sins atoned for. Next one is Exodus 18. Through 20. Now Jethro, the priest of Midian and Moses' father-in-law, heard about everything God had done for Moses and for his people Israel and how Adonai had brought Israel out of Egypt. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken in Moses' wife Zipporah after he had sent her away with her two sons. One was named Gershom because he said, I have been an outsider in a foreign land. And the name of the other was Eliezer because he said, For my father's God is my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. So Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses into the wilderness where he was encamped at the mountain of God. He had told Moses, I, Jethro, your father-in-law, am coming to you, along with your wife and her two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, then bowed down and kissed him. They asked each other about their welfare and went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law all that Adonai had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, as well as all the travail that had come upon them along the way, and how Adonai delivered them. Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness that Adonai had shown to Israel, since he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Jethro said, Blessed be Adonai, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that Adonai is greater than all gods, little g gods. yod heh vav -He is the one true living God, the only God, the creator of all things. <clears throat> Moving on. Since they had acted arrogantly against them, then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, presented a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. Aaron also came along with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. The next day, Moses sat to judge the people, and they stood around Moses from morning till evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, he said, "'What's this you're doing to the people?' Why sit by yourself alone with all the people standing around from morning until evening? Moses answered his father-in-law, It's because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have an issue, it comes to me, and I judge between a man and his neighbor, so I make them understand God's statutes and his laws. But Moses' father-in-law said to him, What you're doing is no good. You will surely wear yourself out, as well as these people who are with you, because the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone by yourself. Now listen to my voice. I will give you advice, and may God be with you. You represent the people before God and bring their cases to God. 
enlighten them as to the statutes and the laws and show them the way by which they must walk and the work they must do. But you should seek out capable men out of all the people, men who fear God, men of truth who hate bribery. Appoint them to be rulers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Let them judge the people all the time. Then let every major case be brought to you, but every minor case they can judge for themselves. Make it easier for yourself as they bear the burden with you. If you do this thing as God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all these people will go to their places in Shalom. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. Moses chose capable men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They judged the people all the time, the hard cases they brought to Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart and he went on his way to his own land. <clears throat> Exodus 19. In the third month after Benai Yisrael had gone out of the land of Egypt, that same day they arrived at the wilderness of Sinai. They traveled from Rephidim, came into, came into the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp in the wilderness. Israel camped there right in front of the mountain. Moses went up to God and Adonai called to him from the mountain saying, say this to the house of Jacob and tell Benai Yisrael. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now then, if you listen closely to my voice and keep my covenant, then you will be my own treasure from among all people, for all the earth is mine. So as for you, you will be to me a kingdom of Kohanim and a holy nation. These are the words which you are to speak to Benai Yisrael. So Moses went, called for the elders of the people, and put before them all these words that Adonai had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, Everything that Adonai has spoken, we will do. Then Moses reported the words of the people to Adonai. Adonai said to Moses, I am about to come to you in a thick cloud, so that the people will hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. Then Moses told the words of the people to Adonai. Adonai said to Moses, Go to the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. Let them wash their clothing. Be ready for the third day, for on the third day Adonai will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You are to set boundaries for the people all around, saying be very careful not to go up onto the mountain or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mountain will surely be put to death. Not a hand is to touch it, but he will surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it is an animal or a man, it will not live. When the shofar sounds, they may come up to the mountain. Then Moses went down from the mountain to the people, consecrated them, and then they washed their clothing. He said to the people, Be ready for the third day. Do not draw near your wives. In the morning of the third day, there was thundering and lightning, a thick cloud on the mountain, and a blast of an exceedingly loud shofar. All the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood at the lowest part of the mountain. Now the entire Mount Sinai was in smoke, because Adonai had descended upon it in fire. The smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace. The whole mountain quaked greatly. When the sound of the shofar grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him with a thunderous sound. Then Adonai came down onto Mount Sinai, to the top of the mountain. Adonai called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses went up. Then Adonai said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through to see Adonai, and many of them die. Even the Kohanim who come near to Adonai must consecrate themselves so that Adonai does not break out against them. Moses said to Adonai, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you are the, the one who warned us. 
saying, set boundaries around the mountain and consecrate it. Then Adonai said to him, go down, you are to come back up, you and Aaron with you, but do not let the Kohanim and the people break through to come up to Adonai, or he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them, Then God spoke all these words, saying, I am Adonai your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Do not make for yourself a graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or on the earth below, or in the water under the earth. Do not bow down to them. Do not let anyone make you serve them. For I, Adonai your God, am a jealous God, bringing the inequity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness, chesed, to the thousands of generations of those who love me and keep my mitzvot. You must not take the name of Adonai your God in vain, for Adonai will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember Yom Shabbat, to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. And it you shall not do any work, not you nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long upon the land which Adonai your God is giving you. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness against your neighbor, do not covet your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, his manservant, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, or anything that is, in, that is your neighbor's. All the people witnessed the thundering and the lightning and the sound of the shofar and the mountain smoking. When the people saw it, they trembled and stood far off. So they said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, or we will die. So Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come to test you, so that his fear may be in you, so that you do not sin. The people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. Then Adonai said to Moses, Say this to Benai Yisrael, You yourselves have seen that I have spoken to you from heaven. Do not make gods of silver alongside me, and do not make gods of gold for yourselves. You are to make an altar of earth for me, and there you will sacrifice your burnt offerings, your fellowship offerings, your sheep and your cattle. In every place where I cause my name to be mentioned, I will come to you and bless you. When you make for me an altar of stones, do not build it from cut stone. For if you use a tool on it, you will have profaned it. Nor are you to go up to my altar on steps, so that your nakedness would not be uncovered while on it. Well, that was all of Exodus that I had written down to read. And the next is Isaiah 6, 1 through seven, six, and nine, five through six. I love the book of Isaiah. It's so good. Just gotta read through the whole thing someday soon. And the year of King Uzziah's death I saw Adonai sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Shalom Prada Nova, by the way. Hi. Seraphim were standing above him. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. One called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Adonai Savaot. The whole earth is full of his glory. 
Then the posts of the door trembled at the voice of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Oi to me, for I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I am dwelling among a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the king, Adonai Savaot. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a glowing coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your inequity is taken away, and your sins atoned for. <laughs> then I heard the voice of Adonai saying, Whom should I send, and who will go for us? So I said, Hineni, send me. Here I am. <laughs> then he said, Go, tell this people, hear without understanding and see without per perceiving. Make the heart of this people fat, their ears heavy and their eyes blind, else they would see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. Then I said, Adonai, how long? He answered, until cities are laid waste and without inhabitant, houses are without people, and the land is utterly desolate. Adonai will drive people far away. The desertion of the land will be vast. Though a tenth still be in it, it will again be burned, as a terebinth tree or as an oak whose stump remains when cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump. Now it came about in the days of Ahaz, son of Gotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that King Rezin of Aram and King Pekah, son of Ramalia of Israel, went up to Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. When it was reported to the house of David, saying, Aram is camped in Ephraim, his heart as well as the heart of his people shook like the trees of the forest shaking with the wind. Then Adonai said to Isaiah, Go out now to meet Ahaz, you and Shir Gashub, your son, at the end of the aqueduct from the upper pool and the highway of the fuller's field, and say to him, Keep calm and be quiet. Do not fear nor be faint-hearted because of these two stubs of smoldering firebrands because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram, nor of the son of Remalia. Because Aram has plotted harm against you, along with Ephraim and the son of Remalia, saying, Let us go up against Judah, terrorize it, divide it for ourselves, and appoint Tabil's son as king in the midst of it. Thus says Adonai Elohim, It will not stand, nor will it occur. For the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. Within sixty-five years, Ephraim will be broken and not be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramalia's son. If you do not trust, you will not stand. Then Adonai spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from Adonai your God, from the depths of Sheol or the heights of heaven. But Ahaz said, I won't ask. I wouldn't test Adonai. Then he said, Hear now, house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? Will you also weary my God? Therefore Adonai himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive. When she is giving birth to a son, she will call his name Emmanuel. He will be eating curds and honey by the time he knows to refuse evil and choose good. For before the boy knows to refuse evil and choose good, the land of the two kings you dread will be abandoned. Adonai will bring on you, on your people, and on your father's house such days as have never come since the day Ephraim separated from Judah, the king of Assyria. In that day, Adonai will whistle for the fly at the source of the Nile of Egypt and for the bee in the land of Assyria. Then they will come, all of them, and will settle in the steep wadis, and in the clefts of the cliffs, and in all the thorn bushes, and in all the watering holes. In that day, Adonai will shave, with a razor hired beyond the river, with the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the legs, 
and even clip off the beard. In that day it will be that a man will rear a calf and two sheep, and from the abundant milk they give he will eat curds, for anyone left in the land will eat curds and honey. In that day it will be that every place where there were one thousand vines worth one thousand silver shekels will become briars and thorns. With arrows and bows one will come there, since all the land will become briars and thorns. As for all the hills that were tilled with the hoe, you will not go there for fear of briars and thorns. Instead, it will be for grazing of oxen and roaming of sheep. Then Adonai said to me, Take yourself a great tablet and write on it with a man's stylus. What? I gotta look that up because I don't know what that is. Maher Shalal Hashbaz. I don't know if I said that right, but. Uh, let's see what this is. Oh, why is my little camera thing not working? Hello. Dang it. <laughs> sure, that's fine. That's good, I guess. <laughs> uh, the second prophetic name mentioned in Isaiah chapter 8 through 9. In the Maher Shalal Hash Maher Shalal Hash Baz Maher Shalal Hash Baz. I want to, I want to know what that means, though. <laughs> Name meaning. Quickly to the plunder, Maher Shalal Hash Baz. Quickly to the plunder, Maher, he who is industrious. Okay. <clears throat> so I took for myself trustworthy witnesses. Uriah the Kohen and Zechariah, son of Jeberich Gaia. Then I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then Adonai said to me, Call his name Mahir Shalal Hashbaz. For before the child will have knowledge to cry my father or my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria will be carried away before the king of Assyria. Then Adonai spoke to me further, saying, Because these people have refused the softly flowing waters of Shiloah and rejoice with Rezin and Ramalia's son, therefore, behold, Adonai is bringing on them the waters of the river, mighty and massive, Assyria's king with all his glory. It will rise over all its channels and spill over all its banks. Then it will sweep through Judah, overflow as it passes through, reaching even to the neck. So the spread of its wings will be the full breath of your land. Emmanuel, make an uproar, O peoples, but you will be broken in pieces. Give ear, all you of far countries. Arm yourselves, yet be shattered. Arm yourselves, yet be shattered. Take counsel together, but it will amount to nothing. Speak a word, but it will not stand, for God is with us. For thus Adonai spoke to me with a strong hand, warning me that I should not walk in the way of these people, saying, do not say it's a conspiracy about everything that these people call a conspiracy. You must not fear or tremble at what they fear. Adonai Salaot 
Him will you sanctify and let him be your fear, trembling at him. He will be a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Many among them will stumble, fall, and be broken, snared and caught. Bind up the testimony, seal the instruction with my disciples. I will wait for Adonai, who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look eagerly for him. Here I am with the children that Adonai has given me as signs and wonders in Israel, from Adonai Savaot, who dwells on Mount Zion. When they say to you, consult the mediums and necromancers who chirp and mutter, Shouldn't a people seek their God? Should a people consult the dead on behalf of the living? To Torah and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no light. They will pass this way that are hard pressed and hungry, and it will turn out that when they are hungry, they will become enraged and curse their king and their God. Whether they turn their faces upward or look to the earth, behold distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish, and they will be driven into darkness. But there is no gloom to her who was in anguish, as in time past. He treated lightly the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future he will bring glory, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people walking in darkness will see a great light. Upon those dwelling in the land of the shadow of death, light will shine. You will multiply the nation, you will increase the joy. They will rejoice before you like the joy in the harvest as they rebel when they divide spoil. For you will break the burdensome yoke and the rod on his shoulder, the war club of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every stomping boot quaking and cloak rolled in blood will be for burning, fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, a son will be given to us, and the government will be upon his shoulder, his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, my Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and shalom, there will be no end, on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it through justice and righteousness from now until forevermore. The zeal of Adonai Savaot will accomplish this. Adonai sent a word to Jacob, and it fell upon Israel. All the people will know what Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria say in pride and in arrogance of heart. The bricks are fallen, but we will rebuild with cut stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. Therefore Adonai raises up resin's adversaries against them, and spurs on his enemies. The Arameans from the east and the Philistines from the west, they will devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, yet his hand is still outstretched. Yet the people will not turn back to the one who strikes them, nor will they seek Adonai Savaot. So Adonai will cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and bulrush in a single day. The elder and the man of rank, he is the head. The prophet who teaches falsehood, he is the tail. The leaders of this people lead them astray. Those they mislead are swallowed up. Therefore Adonai will have no joy in their young men, nor will he have compassion on their orphans and widows. For everyone is ungodly and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks foolishness. For all this his anger is not turned away, yet his hand is still outstretched. For wickedness burns like a fire and consumes the briars and thorns, it kindles the thickets of the forest, so they roll up in a column of smoke. By the wrath of Adonai Savaot is the land burnt up, the people are as fuel for the fire, no one spares his brother. One grabs with the right hand but is hungry, and eats with the left hand but is not satisfied. Everyone will eat the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh will devour Ephraim, and Ephraim Manasseh. Both are against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, yet his hand is outstretched. All right, and the next is the book of Matthew 5, 8 through 20, and 7, 1 through 2.
Now when Yeshua saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its flavor, how shall it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on a lampstand so it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or seraph shall ever pass away from the Torah until all things come to pass. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, this one shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees and Torah scholars, you shall never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever commits murder shall be subject to judgment. But I tell you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be subject to judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be subject to the council, and whoever says, you fool, shall be subject to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you are presenting your offering upon the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offering. Make friends quickly with your opponent while you are with him on the way. Otherwise, your opponent may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the assistant, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I tell you, you will never get out of there until you have paid back the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that everyone who looks upon a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And if your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you that one, of, that one part of your body should be destroyed than that your whole body be thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you that one part of your body should be destroyed than that your whole body go into Gehenna. It was said, whoever sends his wife away, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall carry out your oaths to Adonai. But I tell you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. But let your word yes be yes, and your no, no. Anything more than this is from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evildoer. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him also the other. And the one wanting to sue you and to take your shirt, let him also have your coat. Whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to the one who asks of you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. 
You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Even the tax collectors do the same, don't they? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than anyone else? Even the pagans do that, don't they? Therefore be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Or be holy, just as your Father in heaven is holy. If that weren't possible, then God wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm only saying that because of conversations I've had with people on Instagram comments. I don't like it when born again believers identify or call themselves sinners. <clears throat> It's like we we shouldn't be identifying with that we were sinners sanctification is a process but when you get close to god and you really love god and you renew your mind with his word then you want to obey him and you don't even desire sin anymore <laughs> it's like you want to be holy you want to do god's will but that goes with crucifying your flesh and fasting and prayer and spending time alone with God, seeking him and being in his word and a lot of time in the secret place alone with God and truly getting to know him personally. I'm the first person you've heard teach that. Hmm about people calling themselves sinners. I'm just like, why would you declare that knowing the power of our thoughts? As a man thinks, so is he, as in Proverbs, and there's power of life and death in the tongue. So why would you give the enemy a foothold by declaring or believing or calling yourself a sinner when we're supposed to be a saint? We're supposed to be obedient, obedient to God. Like Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. And there are some scriptures that I wrote down to back that up too. And I think it's in the book of Romans. Oh, let me find it. Is this it? We are all sinners saved by grace. Truly, this is the essence of the entire salvation message. We were once lost in our sin, a slave to it, in fact. But in Christ, we were set free from sin's power and have inherited eternal life. As believers, the Bible tells us that we are now declared righteous by God. Romans 5.1 You are no longer a sinner, rather you are a saint in Jesus' name. So Romans 5, 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua. <clears throat> the Bible tells us that sin no longer has any power over the life of a believer. In other words, before Christ, sin had great power in our lives. It was a daily struggle. Sure, we could potentially make some good choices. After all, there are some in the world we would consider to be good people who aren't Christians, but the Bible tells us that no matter how good we think we are, sin has a power in our lives that we can simply not overcome apart from Christ. In Christ, however, sin no longer has any power. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can say no to sin. It doesn't have to be a daily struggle. We can choose to live by the Spirit who will be faithful to train us in righteousness and give us the strength we need to resist the devil's schemes. 
<clears throat> and then Romans 6, 5 through 7. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. But that just makes me think of being baptized in water because that is... That is part of the process of being born again also. Because that's when you're like confessing your faith that Jesus is Lord. And like when you go under the water, you're crucifying your old sinful self and becoming a new creation and resurrecting when you get out of the water. <clears throat> you have been forgiven and washed clean of all sin. One of the most amazing aspects of salvation is the fact that our sins are literally wiped clean. The Bible describes us as pure and spotless without blemish. It is as if we never sinned. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin, past, present, and future. <coughs> Hebrews 9, 13-4 14, I mean. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You are declared righteous by God. As Christians, we understand fully that we were once sinners, but we often view ourselves as sinners even after we've been saved by grace. I know firsthand that it's easy to do, after all. We are, it says we aren't perfect, but we can, I believe that we can be made perfect, because why else would God say, be holy as I am holy, be perfect as I am perfect? And like, total perfection, in my opinion, is when we get our glorified body, but I think it also can get to a point in this, this body. Like, nothing is impossible with God, so... <laughs> but that's another thing, too. The more you read God's word and spend time with him, like, you... It builds up your faith. So it's like, I have that faith that it's possible instead of... Like, I don't even like to say how some people say that they're not perfect. It's like, I don't believe that I'm there yet, but I also don't want to declare that. Because I'm weird, but words matter. We still make mistakes. <clears throat> Sometimes people slip up and sin. But did you know that the Bible never once calls you a sinner in Christ? You are no longer a sinner, but a saint. You are being perfected in Christ Jesus and are growing stronger in him each and every day. Someone told me that Paul called himself a sinner, so I don't... I don't know where that is. He saw himself as the worst of all sinners. Okay. Context matters. Like, he declared himself as, like, the first sinner. First Timothy 1, 15 through 16. The foremost. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom... I am the foremost, but I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. So he wasn't declaring himself a sinner after being born again. He was just comparing himself with all of those whom Christ came to save. Thank you. 
The Greek word behind the English word foremost is protos, which simply means first. <laughs> Good to know. Now I can use that if that conversation ever comes up again where people called <laughs> think that Paul called himself a sinner in real time instead of uh, past tense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. First in line, measured on some other scale, not temporarily. <gasps> Formerly, I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. Blasphemy means something you do with your mouth. He spoke demeaning lies about Jesus, the Son of God. His words directed people away from the truth about Jesus. His words teared and feathered Jesus with false descriptions. They belittled Jesus and mocked Jesus. His words treated Jesus as a pretender, in effect, a liar. Paul considered his slanderous language about Jesus as the first thing to be mentioned in his unworthiness, so that's where he starts. Persecutor, he went way beyond words. Now these are cumula- cum- cumulative. He's mounting things up here. <clears throat> he went way beyond words. He pursued people to prison. He oversaw the murder of Christians. Here's the way Luke puts it in Acts 9, 1 through 2. Saul, still breathing out threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And what would happen there? Perhaps stoning. In Galatians 1, 13 through 14, he says... You have heard of my former life in Juda- Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people. So extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. He calls himself not only a persecutor and a slanderer of Christ, but an insolent opponent. Now the word is in Greek, hybristin. And you can hear in English the word hubris. We get hubris from it, arrogance, haughtiness, pride. I think this is the key to understanding how literally Paul meant it when he said he was the foremost, the first of sinners. To be a blasphemer or a slanderer, we can measure that by a person's words. To be a persecutor, we can measure that by a person's actions. But how do you measure proud insolence? Haughty, arrogant insolence. Only God could see this evil perfectly, and only Paul could feel it... essentially. And Paul perhaps knew it and felt it more than all the rest of his sins. On the Damascus Road, the words that Jesus used to convict Paul were these... Saul, Saul, that was his Hebrew name. Why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And Jesus said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. This put all of Paul's blasphemy, all his persecution, all his arrogance in a new light. Now, Paul had to measure his blasphemy and persecution and arrogance not by itself, but in relation to the one he was sinning against, the risen, living Son of God. And my guess is that this set Paul to thinking not just about the greatness of Christ as the one he was persecuting, but also about the privileges that he was sinning against. Continuing on, you are declared righteous by God. As children of God, it's important for us to remember that we are no longer sinners. Why? Because it's a lie of the enemy. He loves nothing more than to trap us into thinking that we are hopeless and will always struggle with sin. 
Labeling yourself a sinner makes it easier for him to convince you that you can't say no to sin, that somehow sin still has power over your life. But our sinful nature was nailed to the cross. This is the truth we should be declaring every day. But what about the fact that Christians still sin? Yes, we will still make mistakes. As we grow up and mature in Christ, we will still need to take our sins to God with a repentant heart. But you have been washed clean. So to continue to label yourself as a sinner is a lie. Instead, declare the truth about yourself. You have been declared righteous by God and are growing more mature each day in Him. Choose to see yourself as God sees you, without blemish or fault. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, Yeshua, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Titus 2, 11-14 You are no longer a sinner. You were once a sinner who is now saved by grace. Yeah. And his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord For He is good And His mercy endures forever Forever. I already gave the scriptures. But I'm going to go now. So thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. God bless you all. Keep it plur. Peace, love, unity, respect. Shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless you, everyone.